CCF Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. That is Eric Kaler, the president of the University of Minnesota. Let's head out there as the Gophers appear poised to name a new athletic director. In many ways, Mark is coming home. Some of you got to know him as he rose through Gopher Athletics in the early 2000s, from director of marketing and sales to associate athletics director for external relations. And that was just the start of his extensive preparation for his role as Gophers AD. Mark has strong, diverse, and demonstrated experience. First, in his role as Deputy AD at Kentucky in the Southeastern Conference, then as Athletic Director at Football Powerhouse Boise State, and most recently as the leader of the Syracuse Athletics Department of the Atlantic Coast Conference. He's worked in and led departments that have had success on and off the playing field, and Mark has been instrumental in that success in hiring top coaches, in raising substantial funds, in his commitment to gender equity, in overseeing academic excellence, and in promoting a culture of compliance. Mark and his family are also coming home, sort of, because he and his wife, Kristen, are Iowa natives. He's from Waterloo, she's from Council Bluffs, <clears throat> and now their children, Grace and Nicholas, born right here in Minnesota, and Benjamin are thankfully gonna be Minnesotans again. Mark's new job here is a big one, with large challenges to tackle and exciting opportunities to explore. I want to make this clear. I have very high expectations for Mark, as I do for Go For Athletics, its staff, and its students, student athletes. He is a proven talent, and we are investing in him, and with that investment, in the future of our program. My expectation of him is that he will lead a department that is not only strong in competition and excellent in the classroom, but also exemplary in character and citizenship. Frankly, this has been a tough week and a tough couple of months for our men's basketball program. I'm profoundly disappointed in the continuing episodes of poor judgment and alleged crimes, and it simply can't continue. Mark is aware of my concerns, and wherever he's been, Mark's commitment to integrity is unquestioned. I expect him to set a high bar and to ensure that this department makes news for winning Big Ten and national titles and producing admirable and successful student athletes and not for unacceptable behavior by anyone in the department. That's why I've hired Mark. He brings the kind of well-rounded, accomplished profile and substantial experience as the CEO of top-notch Division I athletics programs that we sought. And by the way, he is living proof that English majors go on to lead successful, exciting, and entrepreneurial careers. At Boise State under Mark, the Broncos were the only FBS program to win conference titles in football, men's basketball, and women's basketball in 2014-15. As a result of this effective fundraising, which hit record levels, Boise State completed high-profile capital improvements such as a state of the art football complex, renovation to the men and women's basketball practice courts, a new outdoor practice field for football, a new softball stadium, a new outdoor track and field facility, and several locker room renovations for Olympic sports. Additionally, the Boise State Academic Center was renovated to better meet the needs and demands of the student athletes. At Syracuse, last March, he oversaw not one, but two Final Four basketball teams. What's more, he was once a ticket operations leader at Florida State and Miami, so you might see him out selling those for us, too. Mark also brings an easygoing and accessible personality that we wanted. Let me turn briefly now to the department that Mark will lead. Through months of uncertainty, our athletics departments, coaches, and staff, and our 700-plus student athletes have been working hard and competing well, and I appreciate that very much. We're fourth in the nation in the Learfield Directors' Cup winter standings, a measure of overall success, and behind only Stanford, Ohio State, and Michigan. In the classroom, 11 of our teams produced perfect multi-year academic progress rates, while 18 of 23 teams maintained or improved their multi-year scores. Our Athletes' Village promises to transform our student-athlete experience and level the playing field when it comes to recruiting and student support. Given his track record, I'm confident that Mark will energize that effort and we will hit our fundraising goals. The point is this, our Gopher Athletics program possesses remarkable potential and Mark brings the know-how to lead us to the excellence we seek in all we do at the University of Minnesota. We will also do this work in a financially responsible way with the goal of having the department be a net financial contributor to the university. I do want to underscore something, and that's my respect for and confidence in <clears throat> Beth Getz. 
I'm grateful to Beth for her leadership during this period and thankful for how she stabilized the department. The department moved forward under her leadership and on the fundraising front raised over $15 million in a period of substantial uncertainty. She's been an incredible partner and I know she has a bright, bright future. I'm also thankful to the co-chairs of the search committee, Vice President Catrice Albert, Professor Perry Leo, and to all of the others on the committee, especially Kevin Warren and Deborah Olson, who were deeply involved in vetting our finalist candidates. As you know, Go For Athletics is often considered the front door to the U. It is an undeniable touch point for many, many Minnesotans. And today, as Mark Coyle becomes the new leader for this highly visible component of our university, we all have good reason to cheer and to expect extraordinary and firm leadership. With that, please welcome Go For Athletics Director Mark Coyle. Thank you, President Kaler, and, and I also want to take. Excited to be here, uh, and it's a very special day for us. Uh, I want to take a second to recognize my family. Uh, we've got Benjamin, Nicholas, Gracie, my wife Kristen, my mom Donna, and my sister Christina. And uh, I can't tell you how excited we are to be back close to our family and have a chance to do something that I love close to my family. I also want to recognize Beth. I had a chance to visit with her this afternoon. I have a great deal of respect for Beth. Uh, I followed this program closely over the past uh, nine months and watched what she did. And again, I want to give my thanks to Beth, and I appreciate everything she did for this program, and I look forward to working with her as we move forward. I would be remiss if I didn't recognize Chancellor Siverud at Syracuse University. Uh, he's a very special person, and I was so grateful for the opportunity he gave me at Syracuse and that's a first-class institution, and they treated me and my family so well, and I regret the timing. But again, I'm so grateful for the opportunity Chancellor Sibiru gave me and the people at Syracuse. They walk with me and my family. We've had tremendous success because there's great people back there, and so I hope he knows how much I appreciate everything he did for me and my family during our time at Syracuse. So the question is, why Minnesota? You know, it's very simple for me. I've been in this for a long time. We love this place. Our kids. Excuse me. Harder than you think. I remember when Gracie turned three, and the benefit of being a director of marketing is you can have Goldie come to your house for your daughter's birthday party. <laughs> and I remember Goldie Gopher walking down the steps in our basement, and Gracie singing the Minnesota fight song. That's why Minnesota. This is a special place, and we're so honored to be here. And I can't wait to work with the students, the coaches, and the staff of this great institution to do even better things. And finally, I want to make sure that you know our number one priority will be our students. I have a great deal of respect for what they do academically, athletically, the social pressures they have on them. And we're going to make decisions that are in the best interest of our student athletes. And we want to make sure we provide them with everything they need to compete at the highest level academically, athletically, but most importantly, we want to make sure that all of us understand that we represent this institution, this community, and the state in a first-class manner in everything we do. So again, thank you for this wonderful opportunity, President Kaler, and we'll turn to questions. Uh, welcome, Mark. Joe Schmidt, uh, Five Eyewitness News. Um, what do you see as your number one duty as the athletic director of the University of Minnesota, especially considering some of the challenges uh, that it has from the basketball program to raising money to, to coaches, things like that? Uh, you, you know, I think I can bring stability. You know, I, I think I, I want to come in here and, and have a chance to visit with people uh, and spend time with people. Uh, but uh, it's very important to me about being transparent. 
and about earning trust and developing relationships. And I think a big part of my job early on is to develop those relationships. You know, I had a chance to visit with senior staff and with the head coaches this afternoon, and it's nice to see familiar faces. And so a lot of those people know who I am from my time 11 years ago when I was here, but I want to come in here and, and just establish the relationships and the stability that we need right now. Um, hi, Mark. Dawn Mitchell from Fox 9. President Kaler alluded to it that the basketball program has recently been the news for a lot of bad behavior. You cleaned up things at Boise State. You also, when you went to Syracuse, you went and cleaned up the football program, had to fire the coach there. It's probably not the best part of your job, but do you see yourself as the guy that also comes in and cleans up probably poor behavior and tough programs? Uh, I think it's my job to create accountability. You know, I think any leader in any leadership position, their job is to come in and create accountability. And I look forward to learning more about the program and getting in and spending time with our, our students, our staff, our coaches, for all of our programs, for all of our staff. So again, I think it's my job to come in, take a look at it, and create accountability and a culture of accountability. Hi, guys. Uh, President Kaler, I'm Mark Coyle. This is Joe Christensen, Star Tribune. And I just wanted to kind of ask both of you, how did the process come together? Like, when did, Mark, were you first uh, thinking about this or hearing about it, and, and who contacted whom, and, and just how did the process go? For you and I'll wrap up. Okay, um, uh, turnkey. Um, there are some conversations with turnkey, and um, uh, quite honestly, given my time at Syracuse, um, I, I was very happy at Syracuse, as I mentioned. Had a wonderful chancellor and Chancellor Siverud. Uh, and his staff and was very happy back there. Uh, they reached out a few more times, uh, and as I had a chance to talk to my wife uh, about this opportunity, the chance to um, come home, obviously I'm emotional about that. Um, that kind of uh, continued to, to be in my heart, and, uh, and then it led us to the process where I had a chance to visit with the committee and with President Kaler. Mark, uh, Jim Suhan, Star Tribune. What are realistic goals for the football and basketball programs here? All the pieces of the puzzle are here. You, you know, I, I, I've been gone for 11 years, and I can tell you uh, we come back here every other summer to see friends in the Twin Cities, and I've been driving around the stadium. Unbelievable to see that. I can't tell you how excited I was to actually see it today inside of it. The pieces of the puzzle are here. We need to talk about it now. I mean, we, our expectations need to be that we're going to compete at a high level. And our goal of recruiting is the backbone of everything you do. And we, we have a place where we have that wow factor. We bring a young man to play football here. We bring a young lady to play volleyball here. Whatever that sport may be, we have the wow factor. Now we just have to create that culture and expect to win and compete at a high level. You know, I'd add to that that um, we're going to build an athlete's village that's, un that's underway. Um, we need to build a big fence around the state of Minnesota and keep Minnesota athletes uh, at home. Uh, and if we do that, uh, we really are not going to have a lot of excuses. It should be realistic for us to win uh, the West and the Big Ten in football, and it should be realistic for us to be very competitive in uh, the Big Ten and NCAA basketball tournaments, uh, both for men and for women. I think those are reasonable, achievable goals in a not too long of a future. Mark. Dennis Spracken from the Star and Trib. Uh, quick question first, when do you actually start? Uh, my goal is to get out here uh, after uh, Memorial Day week, and I think there's a statewide tour, so if my schedule uh, allows, I'd like to get here uh, by Memorial Day weekend. I need wife's approval on that, so mm -hmm. we'll, we'll have that conversation. Um, uh, but that's my goal to start then. Okay, the other question, you left a lot of stunned people in Syracuse. What do you say to them? Uh, I regret the timing. Um, that staff uh, welcomed me. Uh, they, they bought into what we were trying to do. And, and I'm so grateful for them. And, and you know, I, I talk all the time. Uh, the athletic directors get a lot of credit, and they take a lot of heat, too. I get that. These are very visible positions. Uh, but every athletic director has a phenomenal staff behind them. And I can tell you the people I worked at was at Syracuse were phenomenal people. Uh, we've had unbelievable success this year. You know, as a chance to too, we had both men's and women's basketball in the Final Four. Men's soccer went to the College Cup. We have five ACC championships. There's great people there, and, and I regret the timing. Uh, but I'm hopeful they understand uh, what Minnesota meant to me and what this opportunity means to me and my family. Hey, uh, Chip Scoggin, Star Tribune Marker, President Clear. Do you uh, have a sense of what Beth's role will be going forward, if she's going to stay or not? I would. 
certainly uh, encourage Beth to uh, stay. As I said, she's been a terrific uh, interim AD. She's got an incredibly bright future in front of her, and I've indicated to her that my hope is that she will stay. Uh, she's extremely talented, and I'm sure people will be knocking on her door on a regular basis, but I hope she stays a gopher. I agree. I, I had a nice meeting with Beth this afternoon, and, and again, watching from afar, um, uh, have a great deal of respect for what she did. That's not easy to do, and I think she handled it with class, and she handled it well. So, again, I'm very impressed with Beth. Mark, uh, Mike, Max, WCCO Radio and TV. Um, uh, fundraising is the other part of the component to this piece, obviously, and you've worked a lot in that between marketing and whatnot. Have you, is, there, is there a secret sauce? Is there a something? Uh, because, obviously, there's a dollar figure that they haven't hit yet that you're going to have to hit the ground running on. Uh, you know, I think the key with fundraising is relationships. Uh, I think you have to develop authentic relationships with people. And, and, and Max, when I left, uh, when I left Minnesota and went down to the University of Kentucky, that was the first time I was involved in fundraising. and spent seven years doing that. And we had a lot of success, and that was a great uh, training ground for me because it taught me about the importance of developing relationships with the people. They're investing in your program. They're investing in your students, and you better invest in them and develop those relationships. And that's the key, I think. How much do you have to do with uh, Joel, um, you know, we had a chance to talk uh, for a few minutes uh, this morning. I am forever grateful to Joel, his wife Lois. Uh, you know, when I, uh, when I came to at Minnesota as a director of marketing and Joel got here a year later, uh, he provided me with unbelievable opportunities to learn and grow. Uh, and I can tell you when I left the University of Minnesota, that was one of the hardest things I did uh, because it was leaving Joel Maturi. But he has been um, a dear, dear friend. Uh, he is somebody that I can talk to. Uh, what I've learned when you're an athletic director, that chair is sometimes lonely, and he's somebody you can call and you can talk to, and uh, there's not many more people I have more respect for than Joel Maturi. Mark, Jessica Miles with KSTP-TV. I see your kids are all decked out in their Minnesota gear. Do you have extended family here in Minnesota, and how are the kids reacting? Are they excited to come back home and be closer to family? Uh, we excited? <laughs> yeah. They, uh, I talked to him on the phone last night, so that's how we did. But um, yeah, so my wife, or my, my sister, Christina, lives down in Rochester. She's been there over 15 years, I believe. Um, and then my mom's down in Iowa. And um, we've got a brother in Des Moines with his family, uh, family in Chicago, some family outside in Lawrence. So um, this is home base for us. And, and it, it's, um, you know, it's so unique in this, in this business to be able to do what you love to do and to be able to do it with family. And, and that's quite honestly what what makes this so special. Uh, President Kaler back with David McCoy, WCCO. Um, given what you guys went through with Norwood and the Title IX lawsuit, things of that nature, how important, how big of a priority was it for you to hire somebody that had some experience dealing with and coming out of some of the struggles like he did at Boise and Syracuse? It was very important for me, as I said at the very beginning, to uh, bring on board an experienced uh, Division I, uh, Power Five, um, AD. Uh, it is a challenging time right now for go, go for Athletics. We have such incredible potential. We've had such success uh, in the non-revenue sports, um, the Olympic sports. Uh, but people look at football, men's basketball, women's basketball, and men and women's hockey in the state of Minnesota. And we've been successful in a couple of those, not enough. And so having somebody who's been uh, to the Final Four twice, somebody who's been to the Fiesta Bowl, somebody who knows how to do that is, is critically important to me. And the icing on the cake is the terrific human being that Mark Coyle is and the great investment that we're making in him, and he's going to lead us to a very, very bright future. Uh, Mark, Mike Hendrickson from the Minnesota Daily. What did you learn in your one year as an athletic director at Syracuse? Um, you know, Syracuse... Um, what I learned there is, um, you know, these are very visible jobs, and, and there, there's a lot of, of demands placed on your time. And I think I learned how to prioritize and what's important to focus on. And, and you heard me talk about the students. I want to make sure we never lose sight of our students. And, and you know, leaving Boise State and the Mountain West Conference and going to Syracuse and the ACC, um, you know, I learned the importance of, of not losing sight of why you do this. You do it because of the, the students. And, and there may be more TV cameras, there may be more media following your program, and so forth. But again, we want to focus on the students, and that's what I learned during that year. President Kaler, Chip Scoggins, again, you made a pretty sig significant financial commitment uh, with Mark, more so than you ever have with an athletic director. Is that just something you felt like you needed to do to get the right person? Uh, Chip, it's remarkable what the average uh, compensation for Big Ten athletic directors is, about $910,000. Uh, 
Mark obviously uh, had a strong contract at Syracuse. It was important to, to let him make a financial step to come here. Uh, he will be in the mid-range uh, of the Big Ten. Uh, and you're right, though. Uh, in the past, we have uh, been, been satisfied with lower compensation for our athletic directors. Uh, Mark uh, is, is in a different class and is, is deserving the comp compensation that he will be giving. Uh, Mark, uh, Edgar Linares, uh, WCCO Radio, formerly of KTVB in Boise, Idaho. So welcome. Boise. Channel, yeah, Channel, Channel 7, 7, right? Yeah, yeah there you go. Uh, welcome. Uh, you know, a lot of damage was done with what happened with uh, Norwood Teague um, and what happened there. Is there a way to, or, or, or what's your plan to kind of repair what happened with that? Uh, I don't know if, if uh, you know, my plan is to focus on our students, to focus on our coaches. Uh, you know, as President Kelly referred to, they're having a phenomenal year here athletically, you know, in the top top 10 of the Director's Cup. And, and again, our focus is to turn to the student athletes, and that will always be the primary focus of what we're trying to do for this program and to continue, again, to represent this institution, this community, this state in a first-class manner in everything we do. Mark, I, I know one of the best things that people liked about you in Syracuse is that you could, quote, unquote, connect with the fan base. And you talked about visibility. What would be your style going forward? Are you going to be an AD that's very visible at athletic events, very visible out with the students that you're talking about, or what would your style be? Uh, my kids will tell you they can set the record for the number of attended sporting events for kids. Uh, <laughs> we'll be very visible. Uh, you know, I think that's important. You know, you heard me talk before about, you know, people invest in your program. They buy a ticket. They buy a season ticket. They make a gift to the program. Well, we need to invest back in them. And I'm very appreciative of the support we have from our fans. And I remember from my time here, you know, we, we have very loyal fans. We have fans who are hungry. You know, I, I remember going to Marriott Arena for hockey games, and I love being around that atmosphere in Marriott Arena for hockey games. Gracie was a month old, maybe Kristen, at the Frozen Four uh, when Minnesota played in the Frozen Four. You know, so again, I, I love that passion. So I want to be around our fans. I want to be around our supporters, and I want to make sure they know how appreciative we are of everything they do for our program because they have a tremendous impact on the students that come here and compete and go to school here. President Kaler, uh, what did you know about Mark going into the whole process, and how do you feel like the way you stru structured the process how did that help you land on him? I was uh, certainly aware of Mark. We actually met uh, very, very briefly uh, at the NCAA convention in um, January. Uh, so I was aware of him. Uh, I was aware through uh, people who've been here for a while of his connection uh, to Minnesota. And uh, I was very pleased uh, when his name surfaced uh, through our search consultants and very happy to nurture that relationship and uh, get us where we are today. Uh, Mark, in the Twin Cities, you're going to be competing against uh, professional sports teams, and not only for the marketing dollars, but for the fans, and, and sometimes that brings some unique challenges. Can you talk about uh, your philosophy and how you think it'll work out? Well, again, I think uh, we have a great fan base here, and we have to continue to earn their respect, and we have to continue to earn them to keep coming to our games. And and, and I get the Vikings, I get the Wild, the Twins, the T. I mean, I get all that stuff. And and. Uh, and that's awesome, but we're going to focus on the University of Minnesota and providing a great experience for our kids. And if we do it the right way, people want to be a part of what we're doing. There's no doubt in my mind. Mark, uh, Dave Campbell, Associated Press. When it comes to evaluating coaches and their, and their contract situations, is there a, uh, how soon is too soon, I guess, for doing that? Uh, you know, I, I think uh, I'm patient. Uh, and, and I think uh, when no matter what coach you're looking at or what program you're looking at, I think it's important that you understand everything around that program. Uh, and so again, uh, landed in Minnesota last night. Uh, today's been a whirlwind. Uh, you know, I look forward to getting here and having a chance to, to spend time with our coaches, with our students, our staff, and, and learn where our programs are at and what we need to do to continue to improve and, as President Kaler outlined, compete at the highest level. Uh Mark, Michael Rand from the Star Tribune. To piggyback on that a little bit, you just went through a football coaching search at Syracuse. What was that process like, and what, what did you kind of learn philosophically or otherwise from having to, to make a big hire like that? Okay, well, I, I had a huge advantage. Uh, you know, two years ago when I was at Boise State, Chris Peterson left to, uh, to go to Washington. And so I had an opportunity to go through that process, uh, did not use a search firm. Uh, I wanted to make sure when I met with the coaches, I had an opportunity to meet with them. Uh, and so when we went through Syracuse, obviously knew a lot of people out there. I knew a lot of the agents who represented the coaches, uh, and we were able to move quickly on that process to get the right person for Syracuse. We did not. Uh, 
Dennis Bracken again. There, I read a columnist this morning in the Syracuse paper, and he theorized that you, you were frustrated at Syracuse because there was too much to fix. Any truth to that at all? No truth at all to that. Uh, again, Chancellor Siverud, uh, his management team, they have been so supportive, and, and it is such a special place. And, and you know, I, I can't stress enough. I regret the timing. Uh, there was one place I was going to leave Syracuse for, and it's Minnesota. Uh, Mark, how do you view the basketball team and its problems at this point at the, at the University of Minnesota? Uh, again, not having a chance, uh, you know, to dial into that yet. But, but again, I look forward to meeting, uh, you know, the staff, the coaches, and learning what's going on and, and what can I do to help that program grow and, and again, compete at the highest level. Mark, with that said, if once you get settled, and taking this job, you already know some of the good points and some of the bad points. If there had to be the number one thing negative that you want to focus on to clean up first, what would that be? Not to focus on the negative, but there's so many positives, but the truth is a new AD usually is hired because an old AD didn't fit the bill in some way, shape, or form. Uh, you know, my, my number one goal is to bring consistency. You know, I think this department's been through a lot, and the transition's been through a lot. And I think that's my number one goal is to bring consistency and some stability. And that will be my focus early on. Do we have any last questions? All right. Thank you. All right.